class and race are real issues in Jamaica. And they remain intertwined with the high levels of inequality in our society. Indeed, the issues of race and class and inequality influence fundamental aspects of our national life. They influence how we fund education, how we enforce the laws of the land, how we deploy, de deploy st state resources, how we even treat with the Jamaican language, and how we create opportunities in our society, among many other things. And comrades, there needs to be recognition and an honest discussion on these issues if we are to succeed in overcoming inequality and ending acts of injustice and lack of opportunity affecting majority of Jamaicans. I have noted the discussions on these issues over the past week in sections of the media. And I wish to state for the record, our party, the People's National Party, believes and asserts that all Jamaicans are free to support whichever party they choose, regardless of their skin color. That goes without saying. But having said that, there is no doubt that the masses of the people are better off when progressive politics holds sway in this land. I will say without fear of successful contradiction that the People's National Party is the party that, while in government, has done the most to advance the interests of ordinary Jamaicans. Indeed, Michael Manley and the PNP came to power in 1972 because of the failures of the Jamaica Labour Party to deal with the conditions of the majority of Jamaicans in the 1960s after independence. And even worse, because of things like coral gardens when they slaughtered Rastafari, the banning of the great Walter Rodney, wiping out a back of wall just down the road. All of those things happened under JLP rule. Comrades, Jamaica changed in the 1970s. And in particular, the place of black people in our society changed in that era because of the progressive politics of the People's National Party. This cannot be denied. It is evidenced in all the legislation that our party has enacted to support women, children, the unborn, the elderly, workers, students, and small entrepreneurs. The issues dividing our society are more subtle now than in those days. But status quo politics is not good for the majority of our people who remain overrepresented, overrepresented when it comes to poverty, and underrepresented when it comes to income, wealth, status, and acceptance in the society. Comrades, paying debt and balancing the books without dealing with the conditions of the people is status quo politics. If the people are in crisis and you're not pushing in the crisis, then you are dealing with the majority group who need the state to back for them and make their lives more bearable and their prospects brighter. Right. That is the situation facing the people of Jamaica under this Jamaica Labour Party government. Our party stands by its record in relation to these matters and we are committed when we return to power to governing in the interests of all Jamaicans while unapologetically placing emphasis on those who have been excluded and denied opportunities for their advancement. Comrades, we have always been a, an alliance of the progressive elements of all classes in the society, downtown, midtown, uptown, even while our mission has been the upliftment of the disadvantaged masses of the people. And by the progressive elements, who am I referring to? I'm referring to those who use their positions of privilege to improve the conditions of the masses rather than to maintain the status quo. And for the record, our party enjoys and indeed welcomes support from enlightened private sector interests. And that has always been the case. Indeed, our aim is to build a national alliance of progressives that can collectively summon the will and resources that are required 
to make our national motto out of many, one people, more than a noble aspiration. We want to see it to become an accurate description of the Jamaican society. Our founding president and national hero, the Right Honorable Norman Washington Manley, said it, said it well when he expressed that goal in these terms. First, foremost, and above all, to make come true this great motto that I am proud of having played a part in formulating when I was Premier of Jamaica, out of many, one people. We are many. That is colonialism. That is our particular history. That is the problem before all of Jamaica today. How to make out of many, one people. And in that spirit, comrades, we commend a recent gesture from a major local producer to reduce the price of its goods in the trade. We call on all suppliers of, of the basic needs of the population to follow that example and indeed to do more. This is especially needed at this time given the government's failure to adequately cushion the harsh cost of living crisis now engulfing the Jamaican people. So yes, we commend any private sector interest that will put the interest of the people at the forefront in this difficult time and give the people a break. So comrades, our party is a democratic and open organization. It affords discussion and the description of the realities of class, race and inequality in various ways by different comrades, even in terms that some may sometimes not like to hear. Even though visceral discomfort can arise in some quarters when attention is drawn to these issues, it is our party's mission and purpose to address these matters and to set them right by creating a more just and equitable Jamaica for all Jamaicans. So comrades, that is the spirit of my message today. We are an inclusive organization. We welcome a progressive alliance of all sectors of the society who want to see change, positive change, progressive change, the upliftment of the masses of the people, the creation of proper opportunities to fulfill their dreams and for them to achieve the Jamaican dream in all their lives.